हाँ जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम एवरीबॉडी चलें जी शुरू करते हैं बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम इंशाल्लाह वी आर प्लानिंग टू एंड दिस टॉपिक टुडे एस आई स्टेटेड एरलीयर इन माय मैसेज हमारा आज का जो इंशाल्लाह ऑब्जेक्टिव है वी आर गोइंग टू सी टू टॉपिक्स अगेन वी आर गोइंग टू एक्चुअली रिविजिट अगेन व्हाट हार्डी वेंगबर्ग थ्योरम इज ऑल अबाउट सिंस वी हैव टू डू सम क्वेश्चंस दैट डील विद हार्डी वेंगबर्ग एंड देन इंशाल्लाह इन द इन द लास्ट हाफ ऑफ आवर लेसन वी विल बी डूइंग आर्टिफिशियल सिलेक्शन व्हिच आई एम श्योर द आईडिया ऑफ व्हिच वी नो ऑलरेडी बैक फ्रॉम ऑल लेवल्स बट स्टिल वी विल डू इट फ्रॉम द स्क्रैच ओके Now <clears throat> I'm using the same page. I never told you. I deliberately didn't send you the notes. Okay. Inshallah, once I finish this topic today, all of the notes that were left, Inshallah, I will send them. So uh, I'm going to take uh, five minutes or maybe seven minutes, and I'm going to revisit the idea of uh, Hardy-Weinberg theorem in a slightly different way, uh, Inshallah, because uh, I could see yesterday that majority of you actually were not quite. Uh, confident with, with the idea of hardy weinberg theorem so <clears throat> you know i will basically try and define the hardy weinberg theorem today again okay so what does hardy weinberg theorem say it's a principle basically it's a mathematical model the first thing that we need to understand <clears throat> it's a mathematical model which can be used which can be used telling so can be used be used acha ab yahan pe i will stop uh, in the middle of the definition now i'm going to go <clears throat> again to revisit some terminologies that i'm going to bubble the, those terminologies uh we saw something that is known as the gene pool theek hai then we saw something also that's known as a population theek hai and then we saw something also that is an allele frequency when we're dealing with hardy weinberg principle it is important that we are clear about the following three terminologies quickly gene pool is basically all the alleles विदिन अ पॉपुलेशन एट वन टाइम ठीक है ये आप सबको पता है जीन पूल इज द कलेक्शन ऑफ द टोटल एलियल्स इफ यू लाइक ओके कलेक्शन 
of total alley. It's never, uh, hardly will the examiner ever ask what a gene pool is. I'm not saying that there's not a chance, but still. And then population is all the individuals. Okay, so that's the key word, all <coughs> individuals. So when we're talking about organisms, uh, individuals, we're talking about individuals. We're not talking in terms of genes. But when we are talking about the genes of the individual, that's when we use the word gene pool. Okay? And then, of course, um, the proportion, if you like, the proportion of alleles, how many dominant, how many recessive, hai, and so on and so forth, is something that we call as the allele frequency. If you are comfortable with these <clears throat> three words, then inshallah, uh, we should proceed, go back again to what hardy with theorem is all about. So it's a mathematical model, which can be used to predict, predict, and I'm gonna change the color of my ink just to ensure that we understand that what exactly is it predicting, to predict allele frequencies, frequencies, within a population. Within a population. Yani ke, it is just a mathematical way in which we can calculate this idea, allele frequency, as simple as that. Achha, ye to ji pehli baal. I'm gonna mark this as A. B, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is, is this accurate? Is the hardy weinberg theorem accurate? Well, the answer is no. The answer is no. Why? Because it is based on a lot of assumptions. Okay. And what assumptions are there? I'm going to uh, state all of those assumptions. I'm going to again bubble this. What assumptions are there? That there is no migration. Yani ke, we can calculate the allele frequency if number one, there is no migration happening. Number two, there is <clears throat> no mutation happening. Number three, there is no selection pressure. Okay, no selection pressure and therefore no natural selection. And mating is random. Mating is random. And population is large, is large. So more or less, these are, I think, one, two, three, four, five assumptions on which this equation is based. Now, of course, we know that SA nahi hota. I mean, uh, not all of these assumptions can stand true, <clears throat> okay? So uh, this there there will not be a natural population that meets these assumptions, but the model is still useful to get. We estimate laga sakte barhal, ek allele frequency ka. And again, the discrepancy uh, between what we have in real and what we calculate with hardy weinberg theorem as being ideal, us difference ko hum dekh sakte hai, calculate karke t-test say that is it significant or not significant. Let me repeat what I just said, and I want you to give me a yes in the mic or a chat box that you understand this point. I'm saying that this is uh, is not accurate because it assumes the following five things, which are never virtually possible. So that means that this is going to give us an answer that is actually very idealistic and uh, as compared to the real scenario. So do we understand that there will be a difference and that difference is basically used, uh, hum, we will use the statistical tool that we saw yesterday, t-tests, to tell whether this difference is significant or not. Okay. So uh, that's basically uh, what uh, this all thing is about. And then now uh, coming to the equation, okay? just forget about the derivation of the equation. You need to know the equation. There are two equations. The first equation is P plus Q equals to one. That's equation number one. And uh, the second equation is P squared, <coughs> excuse me, P squared plus two P Q plus Q squared. Where exactly this, did this equation come from? I realized that it's, since it's not in our syllabus, so I mean, uh, I think maybe that's the reason why you guys got confused. Anyhow, now we need to know what this individual, uh, what these individual things in the equation they mean. P, again, I'm going to use a different color to explain this. You need to understand that P, and this is a convention you need to remember. P 
represents the frequency of dominant allele. Of dominant allele. ठीक है जी और इसी तरह जो Q है that represents frequency of recessive allele. Okay. It represents frequency of the recessive allele. Now, as far as the p squared <coughs> is concerned, we would assume that it's the square of the frequency, like, and that's not the case. It is the, fre the frequency of homozygous dominant genotype. Homozygous dominant genotype. Okay. Any case. We need to pause here. The first equation, as you can see, I've written what it means in green color, is talking about alleles. What I'm writing in orange, which has to do with the second equation, has to do with the genotypes. Okay, this is important. Ye, it's talking about alleles, and this thing is talking about genotypes. So the, <clears throat> the Q squared, if you like, is representing the frequency of homozygous recessive uh, genotype or may aap ko sirf samjhane ke liye i'm going to make an example let's suppose if you're supposing uh, you know capital a capital a to is genotype ke liye p squared hai aur is genotype ke liye q squared hai and then for 2pq 2pq is the frequency of heterozygous this is something, and that is will be this in our case. Now, this is something that you need to remember. May aapko strongly suggest karunga ke all of uh, when you, although in uh, usual questions you do get these equations, that's majority of the case. But uh, aur wo aapko ye sari ki bhi bata deta. Lekin for the sake of uh, practice and ease. It will take initially a lot of time, but once you do it once or twice, it will inshallah help. I would really encourage that when you are questions, kar rahe hai, you actually write all of this thing down so that you know which thing is representing what, so we don't get confused. So quickly, once again, if we look at the first equation, hai, that is talking about the frequency of alleles, okay? And the second equation is talking about the frequency of genotypes. This is very important. You don't have to jumble mumble all of this thing up. So I'm highlighting uh, the first equation with the yellow color. And then I'm highlighting alleles here. And then I'm highlighting the second equation with the green color. And I'm highlighting the genotypes. Okay, this is very important. Now, up the question is how on earth do we, uh, how, questions kis tarah ke hote hai iske? Main aapko ek pehle bahut simple si example deta And then we'll jump onto the past papers to see how we are going to <clears throat> Okay, so the example question that I'm going to give you, I'm writing that question for you. Uh, cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is it is it a genetic disease is caused by by a recessive allele. Okay, is caused by a recess, recessive allele. Uh, Zero point zero two percent of the population of an area uh, suffer from cystic fibrosis, suffer from cystic fibrosis. What proportion of what proportion are the carriers? What proportion are the carriers. Now, is tra ke hardy wing book theory ke jabbi questions ayenge. There is a three step process that you need to remember. Dekhe, so agar for if you look at the formula that I've written above, uh, if you look at the equations and then you look at the question, it says cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele. Hum suppose kar lete hai, let's suppose that. Cystic fibrosis is caused by, you know, small f, okay? So if it is caused by a recessive allele, if the allele is recessive, and if a person has cystic fibrosis, so what will be the genotype of the person suffering from cystic fibrosis? 
Come on, tell me. Will it be homozygous recessive? We've done inherited change. I mean, this is a simple question. The question itself is saying that it is caused by a recessive allele. Okay. So if one allele is only genotype, mein ho, then this recessive allele will not be dominant over the dominant, of course. So that person will not show uh, cystic fibrosis. Okay. <clears throat> what they're saying in the question is that 0.02% of the population of an area suffer from cystic fibrosis. Is kya matlab hai? Is ka ye matlab hai that uh, this 0.02% uh, of the population is homozygous, recessive for cystic fibrosis. Uh, do you understand this question so far? Abhi mein bilkul aap samjhe 3% mein isko solve kiya. Har step mein mein poochho ga so you have to be very clear. And if anybody gets confused at any point in time, please stop me and ask. Okay, are we good everybody so far? Come on, give me a yes. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Challenge. Um, okay, now the first thing that we need to understand about this question is that you can see that homozygous upper equation. Pe homozygous recessive genotype is represented by what in this equation? If you look at the first equation, P is representing the frequency of dominant allele. Okay, so I mean that is just telling about us the allele. Let's look at the second equation. P squared is telling us about the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. Okay, Q squared. Oh, huh. So that's something that is of a concern to us. Q squared kya hai? Frequency of homozygous recessive genotype. Okay, so can we say looking at the equation that uh, Aap sabse pehle you have to identify that which parts of the formula you have values for. Okay? So you can clearly see that cystic fibrosis, cystic fibrosis equals to homozygous recessive. That's what we have assessed from the question. Okay. Or according to the Hardy Weinberg uh, theory equation, that's Q squared. Okay. Or Q squared, usne hume question mein bataya, uski percentage kitni hai bachcho? 0.2%. Now we need to do some maths. If I ask you to convert this percentage into decimals, to aapko pata hai percentage ka matlab hota hai 1 over 100. So that equals to 0 0.0002. So the value of Q squared, if you like, is 0.0002. Are we good so far? I want you to tell me yes, because this is important stuff. Okay. Come on, everybody. Are we good so far? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Achha ji, ab is Q uh, square ko humne khatam karna hai. To square ko khatam karne ke liye kya tarika hota? I mean, we have Q squared. So if somehow we get Q, then do you think if somehow we get Q, we have one. Do you think we can work out P? It's simple maths, okay? So Q square hamare paas hai. Uska agar aap dono side pe under root, root lein. So it's basically something like this. You have to finish uh, the squared. That's the method. So this is 0 0.014. That's the value of Q that we get. Now, if we put this in the equation, P plus Q equals to one and P plus 0 0.014 equals to one. And then uh, P equals to 0 0.986. So that's how we <coughs> have uh, we, we have the P value. So you can see that we have the value of P. Ki rahi hai. We have the first equation done for us. But now let's look at the question. What is the question asking for us? Okay. Um, aap se keh rahe, which, uh, sorry, where is the question? Yes. So, uh, what proportion are carriers? Carriers ka kya matlab hai? What proportion are carriers? I mean, when we're talking about proportion, are we talking about, is he talking about allele or do you think he's talking about individuals with genotypes? I mean, a carrier, is ka phenotype kya hoga? Genotype kya hoga? 
capital F, which is not cystic fibrosis, and small f, which is for cystic fibrosis, but this person in its phenotype will not be a cystic fibrosis, but will be a carrier. So what he's asking is what proportion are the carriers? So what proportion is this? Now let's go back to the equation and see from the equation that what is representing heterozygous in the hardy weighing bacteria, and that is 2PQ. Okay, that's the frequency of heterozygous. So we figured out from the question that he is, what is he asking? He is asking for the frequency of the homozygous recessive, which according to this question are the carriers. So what do we do with this now? Hamare pas, we have the value. Uh, we worked out the value of P and Q. So simply hum kya karenge? Hame equation se pata hai ke 2PQ is what he is asking. We have the value of P that is, uh, 0.986 and we have the value of Q, which is 0.014. So that gives us 0 0.03. The 2PQ key value hai, that is 0.03. Question with AKS Nikya Kava, what proportion? Okay. Agar wo percentage may de to aapko isko percentage may karna parega, otherwise. 0.3 yani ke isko aap slash 3% bhi keh sakte theek hai so that's basically how the question will go about theek hai ko bahut zyada technical nahi hai i mean i'm they get simple maths we're just it's just about remembering what the the equations they basically represent theek hai aur main aapko batau iska main aapko let me give you a very standard uh, <coughs> way that you can solve these questions you will not need this, but just for the sake of spoon feeding, if you like, um, I'm going to give you the following. Uh, whenever you come across any uh, question that deals with the following, you have to do these four steps. Identify which parts of the formula you have values for. Question ko dekhe, aap dekhe, kya P or Q mein se kya calculate kar sakte. Work out P and Q and then identify which parts of the formula you're being asked in the in workout and then work 2PQ. Let's look at the Cambridge question. Lenji, ye aapke paas questions hain ji. This, I have two questions for you uh, for this topic. One is from May, June, 2018, the variant four one question four part C. Theek hai ji, ab isko zara dhyan se, ghor se, jo hai wo dekhe. Now the question says, uh, Hardy -Wengberg, the hardy wengberg principle is used to calculate the allele, the genotype, and the phenotype frequencies. Asal mein allele or genotype hai, wo, of course, jo genotype hai, usse aapko phenotype bhi pata lag jata hai. Aur mujhe ab aap khud batayin, uh, I'm jumping the gun. We are looking at two equations. We know that the allele thingy uh, is basically concerned with this equation. And when we are talking about the genotypes, we are concerned with the second equation. Okay, that's something for us to remember. Anyhow, let's read the question carefully. A breeder of birds keeps a population of 86 uh, budger, I don't know, whatever, budge, whatever the case is, in one enclosed area. Okay, there birds. Hai. 86 is the total population. Hai. So, I have to tell you that total population is 86 okay. in, an in one enclosed area. Two distinct phenotypes are present okay. blue feathers and green feathers. So, you have blue feathers. What are the phenotypes? I have to tell you that I have to tell you that I have to tell you that you have blue and you have green. Blue and you have green feathers. Okay. Feather color is controlled by one gene. Capital G is the allele for green color. Okay. Ye pe maine likh diya. And small g is for blue color. So, ab hume pata lag gaya. Questions say that this is recessive. He has not mentioned this, but we know this is from the obvious convention. And that's dominant. Okay. Okay. Now it says in the question, in the third bullet point, only 17 of the budge have blue feathers okay yani ke 17 out of 86 jo hai 
उनके पास ब्लू फेदर्स हैं अब जरा आप यहां पे रुक जाएं एंड थिंक अबाउट दिस ब्लू इज रिसेसिव एली ठीक है तो जो सेवेंटीन है कैन वी फिगर आउट और कैन वी थिंक ऑफ द जीनो टाइप ऑफ दीज सेवेंटीन क्या ख्याल है बच्चों क्या जीनो टाइप होगा इन सेवनटीन का कम अंटेल मी What do you think will be the genotype for these seventeen? They have blue feathers, and that's a recessive alley. So, if they are, um, you know, um, uh, okay, I've got an answer. Excellent. ठीक है जी ये होगा जी homozygous recessive. देखिए ना blue है ना they're saying seventeen of them have blue feathers, and since the the blue is represented by a recessive allele, so only if you have homozygous recessive, it's only then. when it is going to show you uh, uh, this particular phenotype so it has to be homozygous recessive okay ab wo aapko dono equations usne de di hain aur he is expecting ki aapko pata hai ki p kya represent kar raha hai q kya represent kar raha hai so quickly uh, uh, let's uh, you know for the sake of our revision purposes see what p is representing p is representing the डोमिनेंट एलील फ्रीक्वेंसी और इस केस में किस जीन की जी की एंड क्यू इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग रिसेसिव एलील फ्रीक्वेंसी और इस केस में किसकी स्मॉल जी की ठीक है वॉट अबाउट पी स्क्वेड दैट इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ विच जीनो टाइप कैपिटल जी कैपिटल जी Q squared is the frequency of small g, small g, okay, and PQ is the frequency of capital G and small g. Our second equation is dealing with the frequency of genotypes, and the first equation is dealing with the frequency of alleles. I am reiterating this point again and again. The first equation is concerned with the frequency of alleles. and the second equation is concerned with the frequency of genotypes theek hai ab wo aapse keh raha calculate the number of heterozygous individuals okay now what he is asking is it from the first equation or is it from the second equation let me pose this as a question for you first or second number of heterozygous individuals mujhe bataye is he asking the frequency of alleles or is he asking the frequency of genotypes what is he asking come on tell me it's a question i pose come on tell me is he asking the frequency of a genotype or is he asking the frequency of an allele heterozygous kya hai is it a phenotype is it a genotype or is it just an allele come on class itna bore na kare mujhe please say something anybody otherwise i'll pick and choose zaina sir genotype genotype shaba heterozygous hai na it's genotype acha ab equation mein aap dekhen ki wo basically that's basically 2 pq okay so uh that's what he's asking so for that we need to work out p and we need to work out q so can we work out uh p well we can work out p i mean hame we know the total number right we know the total number uh <coughs> what is the total number the total number is 86 aur usme se 17 kitne hain 17 are uh we know that uh 17 uh, the genotype is homozygous recessive to hum kya karenge the first step that we do is we divide 17 by 86 okay 17 By eighty six, what do we get? Seventeen divided by eighty six. It's simple mathematics. That is zero point one nine eight. ठीक है जी zero point one nine eight. ये क्या है हमारे पास? Zero point one nine eight is representing what? हमारे पास p और q. We don't know something from the first equation in this uh, particular thing. So what we're doing is we have gg which is the frequency of q squared theek okay? hai so what we have calculated is basically q 
क्यूब स्क्वाड ठीक है देखे ना हमारे पास क्वेश्चन में उसने ये बताया सेवनटीन है ब्लू फेदर्स सो इफ ही टॉकिंग अबाउट सेवनटीन ही टॉकिंग अबाउट सेवनटीन फ्रॉम द पॉपुलेशन विच मीन सेवनटीन ऑफ देम है जीनो टाइप स्मॉल जी स्मॉल जी and therefore we know that from the equation that is q squared frequency of uh, homozygous recessive to agar q squared 0.198 hai to q kya hoga iska under root le 198 that equals to 0.445 okay so now we have 0.445 that is representing q so if we know q then we can substitute this in the equation 0. p plus q wali 0.445 equals to 1 and when you do the maths this comes the value of p comes out to be the following which is uh 0.55 okay to aapke paas ab hamare paas p value bhi aa gayi aur hamare paas q value bhi aa gayi we have to calculate the number of heterozygous we have to calculate 2 pq so 2 multiplied by 0.555 multiplied by q which is 0.445 and the answer is the answer comes out to be almost um kare zara kya aata hai theorem se calculate 2 multiplied by 0.555 multiplied by 0. 445 that is 0.49 0.49 so check kar lete hain yep the answer is 0.49 mujhe sach sach bataye kisko samajh mein aayi hai thodi zara maths aa gayi bio mein kafi zyada idhar lekin honestly who is confused let's be honest come on who is confused लेट मी आस्क वन बाय राबिया मुझे आप चैट बॉक्स में बताएं जैनब कितने परसेंट समझ में आया डज दैट मेक सेंस अम क्लास फरियाल राबिया साथ जैनब कुछ मुझे यकीन करवा दें कि मैं जो है ना इंसानों को पढ़ा रहा हूं जो कि मुझे सुन रहे हैं आई मीन इफ यू आर कंफ्यूज देन लेट मी नो ना क्या हो गया Uh, Zainab, tell me. Do you understand what the question is all about? Okay, I've got something in the chat box. Okay, some is already challenged. Alhamdulillah, that is great. Slightly confused, but it is easy. Asal mein aap isi liye jo dusra question hai. By the way, uh, there is this uh, mark scheme and examiner report. Ye main aap saath aap share karunga. And I am not doing. Ye March 2020 mein bhi question aaya hai. Ye wala main nahi aapko karwa ra. I am giving this uh, to you as homework. and i want you to do it yourself main aksar homework deta hu to aap sab mujhe ditch kara dete hain but i will be serious about this i want you to do this second question yourself aur agar nahi hota to fir inshallah usko hum next class mein agla topic shuru hone se pehle dekhenge inshallah theek hai ji so that uh, <coughs> finishes our hardy wing but principle let's take our traditional one minute break i'm ending the session please rejoin in a minute and then inshallah we will wind up this topic with artificial selection thank you